Hello everyone, today we'll cover the vibration analysis in turbo machines. In part B, we'll discuss how to diagnose common conditions by analyzing vibration spectrum and how to fix the issue. Let's go back to the table here. We covered vibration analysis related to mass imbalance and misalignment in the part A video. And we'll continue to cover the topic related to shaft bowing in the part B. Okay, let's look into the shaft bow. This bowing can cause 1x vibration and drop out of vibration around critical speeds in the body plot. As you could imagine, straightening the turbine rotors is vital for smooth and low vibration operation. The figure on the right shows the rotor runout measurements showing shaft bow. The rotor runout is measured by dial gauge. Rotor bowing often due to localized overheating and uneven temperature changes during operation can result in permanent metallurgical changes yielding residual stresses and uncorrectable bowing. A bow shaft can cause actual opposed forces on the bearing which can be detected in the vibration spectrum as 1x in the actual vibration. The most severe instances of enduring bowing typically result from the water entering the hot turbine, leading to cooling of a section of the rotor and potentially cause robbing that can induce plastic deformation in a small part of the rotor. Example of the seal rubbing the rotor is shown on the right, which can slowly bend the shaft over time. From our observations, when the rotor bowing occurs and the total runout surpasses a specific threshold, rectifying the situation through balancing become very challenging. As a result, surpassing the critical speed renders it hard to operate the rotor, thereby preventing the turbine from functioning. So there are two viable options. Either replace the rotor with a new one or rectifying the situation by straightening and rebalancing the existing rotor. To address the shaft bowing issue, it typically begins with annealing process. The purpose of annealing is to relieve residual thermal mechanical stress caused by rubbing. During the annealing process, thermocouples are attached near the heated zone for precise temperature control. Figure on the right bottom shows how the temperatures is managed during the annealing process. The localized heating applied to a complete circumferential band at the rotor area. After completing the annealing process, runout is reassessed before proceeding to the hot spotting stage. In hot spotting stage, rapid heat is applied by torch causing local plastic deformation. And cooling generates tensile stresses, internally compensating for stresses. It is important to note that effective straightening requires a local temperature above 600 degrees Celsius, ideally around 700 and plus minus 10 degrees Celsius. Note that these temperatures are reference only. But please make sure to limit the hot spotting temperature to 750 degrees Celsius to prevent austenite transformation. Also, avoid overlapping hot spots to prevent cracks. It is important to note that the applied heat induces compression in fibers, counteracting the tension stresses and straightening the shaft. Through iterative process of annealing and hot spotting, the shaft undergoes straightening, resulting in reduced mass imbalance in the rotor. After straightening the shaft, you must rebalance the shaft. Let's go back to the table here. Today, we cover the shaft bowing and how to fix this issue. In the next video, we'll delve into the remaining vibration analysis in the turbo machines. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next videos.